In this session, we'll look at how we can use AutoCAD to build custom content that can be used in an InfraWorks model. As you can see, I've got InfraWorks open. I'm currently working on a site plan for a proposed fast food restaurant. Now, as you look at the site plan, you can see several custom objects, like this large sign, maybe these picnic tables, even the building itself. As you look at this, you may be wondering where these objects came from. Well, I actually made them myself using AutoCAD, and it's easier than you might think. Let's take a look. I'm going to start by orbiting around to the back of the building here, back here by the drive through I currently have a menu board. What I'd like to do is create another menu board that represents the weekly specials. So that's our goal. To create this object, I'm going to use AutoCAD. Over here, I have some simple geometry. I've defined a couple rectangles and a simple closed polyline. Let me also mention that I have adjusted my units. We'll come over to Drawing Utilities and I'll choose Units. I prefer to work in feet, so that's what I've set this drawing to. Let me close this. I'm going to build the menu board using solids. So we'll start by viewing the geometry in 3D. I'll do that by clicking the southeast hotspot here on the view cube. I will then change the ribbon to show the 3D modeling tools. We'll do that by clicking this gear in the lower right corner, and I'll choose 3D modeling. Now, these rectangles represent the base of the menu board. This outer one represents the part that touches the ground, and this inner one represents the top of the base. So let's move that up. I'll launch the move command and I'll select that shape and press enter. I'll pick it up from the corner and then I'm going to tap the F8 key to lock my ortho. When I do, you can see that I'm pulling this straight up along the Z axis. I'd like the base to be a foot and a half tall, so I'll type 1.5 and I'll press enter. Now let's create a solid between these objects. I'll do that by coming over to the modeling panel. I'll open this extrude menu and I'll choose loft. I will then select these two sections and I'll press enter twice. Using the loft command, I can create a solid between any selected sections. So my base is done. Let's flip to a conceptual visual style to put a little shading on that. We can orbit this around a little bit more, and we'll take care of this shape. This shape represents the menu board itself. That's going to be five and a half feet tall. So to create that geometry, I'm gonna do an extrusion. I'll open the same menu again, and I'll choose extrude. I'll select this shape, and I'll press enter. You can see that we can pull this up to assign our extrusion height. I'm going to type 5.5 and I'll press enter. So there's the top of the menu board. At this point, I'd like to place the top on the base. To do that, I'm going to flip back to a 2D wireframe view just to make it easier to grab the object snaps. Let's zoom in and then I am going to launch the move command and I'll select the top here and I'll press enter. I want to pick it up from the midpoint between two points. We'll pick it up from the midpoint between these two centers and I'll place it to the mid between two points, the midpoint between these two endpoints. Let's zoom out. We can go ahead and flip back to a conceptual view, and if I orbit, we can see the menu board there. Now I'd like to create a recessed area here on the front where I can place an image that has the weekly specials. I'll start by creating a rectangle, and I'd like that rectangle to be drawn on this face, so let's change the UCS. I'll come up to the coordinates panel and I'll click the UCS button. And then I'll set the origin of the UCS here at the end point at the lower left corner. I will then pick an end point that defines my X axis. And then I'll pick an end point that defines my Y axis. If I orbit this now, you can see that I've defined a plane on that front face. Now let's create a rectangle. I'll launch the rectangle command and I'll draw that from the lower left corner to the upper right. And then what I'd like to do is offset the top edge down and the bottom edge up a quarter of a foot, just to give me a little border around the menu. First, we'll do a quick explosion. I'll launch the explode command. What do I want to explode? L for last. We'll explode the last object that we created, and I'll press enter. Then I'll come up and launch the offset command. My offset distance will be 0.25, and I'll press enter. Note that I have my selection cycling turned on, so when I click this edge, I can then choose that line and I can offset that down. Still in the command, I'll click this edge and I apologize this is going off screen. I'll choose the line and then I'll pull that up and I'll press escape when finished. Now to create the recessed area, I'm going to use the press pull command. So we'll come back to the modeling panel. I'll choose press pull and I'll place my cursor inside this rectangular shape that I've made. I'll click and you can see that I can now press or pull this. Let me push in and I'll type 0.05 and I'll press enter. I will then press escape when finished. Let's put the UCS back where it was. I can do that by opening this menu below the view cube and I'll choose WCS. And then if I zoom in, we can see this recessed area. 
Now let's take a quick measurement. We'll find out how big this face is. I'm going to type DI for distance, and then I will select the lower left endpoint. What's the distance to the lower right? That's 2.1. What's the distance to the upper left? That is 5. So knowing that measurement, I now know the image size that I'm looking for to fill that space. Let's jump over to Photoshop. Here you can see the image I've created. I'm going to come up to the image menu and I'll choose resize and then I'll choose image size. I just want to show you that I defined this image to have the same proportions as the face that I'll be mapping it to. It's 2.1 wide by 5 tall. Let's close this. So this will be the image that we'll be applying. Let's flip back over to AutoCAD. Over here we are going to apply some materials. Let's orbit this around. I'll zoom out just a touch. To work with materials, we'll choose the Visualize tab, and then I'll come down to the Materials panel, and I'll click the Materials Browser button. This shows me the materials that exist in the current drawing. Right now we don't have any. I'd like to go shopping for some materials. I'd like to paint this menu board black, so I'd like a nice black material. To find that, I'm going to type black as my text string here in the search box, and then AutoCAD will show me all the materials that contain that text string. Currently it's looking at the plastic group. This is fine for right now. I'm going to use this smooth black texture. Let me click the arrow to add that to the drawing. I can then add this material to my objects just by clicking, holding, and dragging. Let me drop that on. Now we can't see the material just yet because we're looking at a conceptual view. Let's flip this to realistic momentarily. And I apologize, that's going to be a little bit difficult to see with the dark background. Let's drag this over and we'll drop it on the base as well. So now I've painted the object black. Next we'll create the material for the menu. To create a brand new material, I can open this globe icon in the lower left corner, and then, I apologize we're off screen, I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom and I'll choose New Generic Material. I will then give the material a name, I'm going to call it Weekly Specials. This material is going to be based on an image, so I'll click the Image property. I will then navigate my hard drive and select that image that we created from Photoshop, and I'll choose Open. For this application, I'm going to drag the glossiness down. Note that we have other adjustments we can make. The most important adjustment is size. The trick to getting these to match properly is to set the size of your material to match the face that you're applying it to. I'll do that by clicking this image field again. And in the texture editor, I'm going to drag this down to scale. I will then unlink the proportional constraint. Let's change the width to 2.1 feet, and we'll change the height to 5.5 feet. I'll press enter. I will then close the texture editor, and I will close the materials editor. I will then take this material, drag it over, and I'll hold my control key when I drop it over to the desired face. That applies the material to that face only. I can then close the browser. Now if we zoom in and look at this, you can see it doesn't fit exactly right. That's okay. That's what this button's for. Planar mapping. I want to adjust the mapping of this material. I'll do that by clicking the button. I will control click that face. I'll press enter. Press enter again to select it. And you can see it's now aligned perfectly. Let's press enter to accept that. I'll zoom out. We'll orbit around and take a look. At this point the menu board is finished. Now I'll export this as an FBX so I can insert it into InfraWorks. I'll do that by opening the application menu. I'll choose export. FBX. I'll navigate to the directory where I'd like to save the file. I'm going to call it Weekly Specials, and I'll click Save. I'd like to create that FBX from selected entities. I'll go ahead and click the Select Objects button, and I'll select the menu board and press Enter. I want to export the objects and the materials. I'd like those materials embedded, and I'll click OK. Now that the FBX file's been created, let's jump back over to InfraWorks. Back in InfraWorks, I will orbit around to the back side of the building where I'd like to place the menu board. I will then bring up Windows Explorer, and I'll navigate into the directory containing my FBX file. I will then click, hold, and drag that file into InfraWorks. From here, I can open the Type menu and select what this object represents. I'm going to choose City Furniture. If I want to see a preview of the object, I can click the 3D Model tab. We can orbit that around right here. Let's go to the Geolocation tab. To place the object, I'll click Interactive Placing. This allows me to position the menu board wherever I'd like in the model. I'll just double click to drop it. I will then choose Close and Refresh. At this point, I can move up and close the Data Sources panel. I will then select the menu board, and I can rotate it using these rotation grips. I'll just click and hold, and I'll pull this to the right. I can also click and hold on this red square if I'd like to reposition it in this area. I'll release, and I'll press Escape when finished. 
Let's pan this up. We'll orbit a little. And at this point, our custom menu board project is complete. So the next time you have an InfoWorks model that requires some custom components, remember that it's always possible to create these objects yourself. With a little practice, you'll find that AutoCAD can help you build just about anything that you may need. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.